Yeah, so, I do wonder, like, this conference is the one that I'm kind of, like, unsure about, like, the most, and, like, I outed at the last minute, because I'm like, like, VR, you know, like, this is the first VR conference during any E3. And, I mean, I'm not really that big of a VR person. I don't even know who the heck Upload VR is. But, you know, it'll be interesting. And since I'm basically going to be stuck in my room all damn day, because if we look at the schedule, it's basically back to back to back to back to back. Like, there's basically no breaks between any of the shows. Except for maybe the last one. So, yeah, it's gonna be really freaking loud, probably. I mean, not loud. I mean, it's freaking loud, but I wasn't even trying to say that. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to leave my room, like, at all, so... I actually have a lot of damn food here for once. I made a lot of shit ahead of time. So I got three jalapeno hot dogs, two deli sandwiches, some jalapeno poppers wrapped in bacon, and some seven layer dip. Well, and some salsa. So basically, the only thing I would have to get up for is to go to the bathroom and to refill my drink, and both those should take no time at all. Yeah, I think this said it was a YouTube premiere, I think, so, like, yeah, is this the normal premiere screen, like, that YouTube provides? Because I've never watched a YouTube premiere. Oh, yeah, and another thing, I forgot. This is now a thing. Basically, you can send a message for free, and basically it does a free donation. Are you kidding me? They had a countdown for a countdown for a countdown. What the fuck? Are you- what? <laughs> I gotta see what the chat's saying about this. <laughs> yeah, everybody's freaking out. Are you- Excuse me? Just the entire chat is just F, 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 countdown for a countdown. Up, oh, wait. Doing something here. Apparently, my stream. Like, then the browser was a bit ahead, but oh well. Well, this looks adorable. But yeah, but if you want, you can go ahead and try that loot slink in the thing. Like, it's basically a way to give a donation for free. Just, and you say anything you want on stream, because it'll show, like, a little pre-roll ad on the side of the screen. It's, like, kind of a cool thing. I mean, it's solid as fuck, but I mean... Uh, Fuji. Okay, so I think I get this. Like, it is technically like a pre-show thing, I guess. And 
they're just gonna have trailers in a splice throughout the pre-show countdown. Which I mean, I guess makes sense, but ne they never said anything about pre-show. So I mean... But then again, the stream actually did start early, so I guess I can give them that at least. Because the ones will start to 11 and it's only 10.50, so... I just say this music is a jam. Too. I mean, that's why it's called a PB&J. Hmm. Also, this is actually something I didn't even realize, but uh, Ubisoft's doing their speedrun thing at 1.30, and the PC gave, well, 1.30 Eastern Time, so that's uh, 12.30 my time, whatever. But well, the PC Game Show is at 12 itself, so, like, the thing is, I want to watch the Ubisoft thing simply because you get a free copy of Rayman Origins, but at the same time, like, the PC Gaming Show is probably going to be, like, a two-hour show, because it always is. And it's like, ugh, like, I'm probably going to end up missing out on the free copy. I mean, granted, I could just have it right in the background, but the thing is, I don't know how bad that would affect the stream in the background and muted. Meat DLC. Well, okay, I guess.
go in our trailer. Okay, this one looks pretty cool. Until you fall. I think I just realized that is the music like getting more like like a layer added on top every single time they go back to the countdown. So that's kind of cool. I just saw the best plot. Counter Reeves is in a modern relevant video game with a lot of popularity, which means Counter Reeves is now eligible to be put in Smash. Your task is God damn it. To destroy this place before the day of the eclipse. You are one of the few to walk in the sunlight.
the song we started like right before the countdown ended. Hey guys, Richard here, studio director at Vertigo Games. Welcome to our studio. Today the team will be talking about After the Fall, our biggest and most ambitious VR project yet. We've been working on this for so a while. So they actually got years, just some random game studio director that's not related to the upload VR people. To start off, that's a shame. Also, I mean, they did just show a trailer, I'm pretty sure, for this game, so like... It's just like a second trailer, or like just another game of the same company. After the Fall is a VR action FPS with RPG elements set in a shared world with four-player co-op at its heart. Players use their own combat styles to fight against a variety of these zombie-like creatures known as the Snowweed Dude, speak in a up. battle You're a bit too for quiet. survival and control of a frozen post-apocalyptic Los Angeles. For me, After the Fall is about a lot of enemies and about loads of loot. Me and my team are really pushing the boundaries of VR by getting the largest hordes, the biggest bosses and the richest environments on screen all shared with players around the world. So once players have teamed up and selected a loadout, they go on a mission together. Missions can involve various types of objectives. Say a settlement um, is in desperate need of some assistance and requires you to go out and save them. From a giant colossal snow So it's like an online co op VR. Your main experience. focus for After the Fall are the main missions that you do, but aside from that, there's also side content that you can follow, and events, and other interesting encounters that you can do to upgrade your equipment further, you know, and of course, play that endgame. Hey everyone and welcome to the first ever Upload E3 VR Showcase. Thanks for being here, I'm Jamie. This is going to be exactly what it sounds like, 60 minutes of VR games. That's not a lot of time for me to talk, you just want to see the games. Why don't we just get right to it? Do you remember Meliora? Huh. It was a land of magic and wonder. Foes wish to claim it. There is no price I wouldn't pay to protect my home. What is but a soul in return for such power? Wait, TF2 stuff? Excuse me? They got the rise from Valve to do that, I guess? Okay. It's a uh, game with hot dogs. Fighting. I am so confused by this, excuse me. Beat Fortress, what the fuck? Excuse me? 
Okay, I need them. Go back to the YouTube chat to see what in the fuck they're saying about this. Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to Necorp's offices. We're going to be showing you some footage from budget cuts for PSVR for the very first time. So, enjoy. Yeah, they're freaking out. Hi, my name is James Hunt, and I'm very happy to announce the next title from Fast Travel Games and a passion project of mine called The Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets. The Curious Tale is an interactive heartwarming story where you play your childhood memories formed into tiny worlds in front of you. The game is full of animated life, playful interactions and joyful unique puzzles. We at Fast Travel Games are known for our action adventures in first person, but this is something very different. We're a small, passionate team working on this game alongside our bigger titles and we hope to share something really special. And here's the very first trailer. Enjoy! Is that you? I didn't recognize you at first. You're all grown up. Do you remember the curious worlds we created together? You and I? We have a problem to handle there. And I think you... Like, this song sounds very familiar. Like, it's slightly off, but th this is an actual, like, old song, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, why is it, Why am I blinking on the name? PlayStation, I guess. Yoo-hoo! Hot sauce, please! Hello! We need to put aside our differences and work together. I wasn't expecting Angry Birds at all. Are you kidding me? Okay, I did not expect like any like bigger games to be here like at all and so for both freaking Valve essentially okay, guys, let's do this and then now freaking Angry Birds which I mean it's, it's still not like the biggest thing but I mean it's a bi big franchise at least but like Angry Birds VR what excuse me for the players are you freaking kidding me? That was an awesome showcase of the great content VR developers are putting out there right now. Next up, let's take a trip to the TARDIS. Signal of maximum power. Oh, you are gonna love this bit. Doctor Who The Edge of Time is a feature length adventure where you get to fly the TARDIS and visit new locations in the Wait. world of Doctor Who. TARDIS? And the story based around a, a villain that has awoken They've in control of space and time, and they've sent out a reality virus that totally disrupts the time across various worlds. Stronger, and I'll soon be through that door. Like, what the hell? Now we got Doctor Who? Are you thinking what I'm Excuse thinking? Excuse me? We get to visit different worlds, different times. We get to explore worlds really intimately. Like, what the hell is going on here? Just all of a sudden, like, big name after big name. Well-known characters such as the Weeping Angels, or even a Dalek. For us, it's really important that we capture the experience of being in an episode. And that moment when the TARDIS appears is a really powerful moment. And of course, when you open the doors and you can actually see the TARDIS, it's quite quite amazing, a really, real VR moment.
Lo-Fi. Huh. What's this Oh, it's a mobile? Wait, what? It's a mobile game brought to VR, I guess? That's weird. Acorn attack of the scrolls. Okay, so Hi, it's not a mobile I'm game Peter. coming to VR. It's I'm from Resolution Games. At the same time. We're okay, in the middle well, of Stockholm and we're working on a multiplayer VR game called Acron. In Acron, the VR player becomes a magical tree Acron. trying to defend not its acorn. acorns. Acron. The mobile players joins in okay. as squirrels trying to steal the acorns. We try to make games that could fit everyone. It was just the most natural thing that. Okay, that's okay, so actually kind of cool. So, acorns, essentially, like the main player is well, in VR, but everybody <laughs> else squirrels. plays That's against cool. them on the phone. So, essentially, it's a party game. You you can pick up your friends. They're playing as the squirrels. You throw them away. You can pick up projectiles, a bowling ball. You can even pick up some sap, throw it on the field. And when the sap lays down, the squirrels will be slow when you're running around. Acorn is coming later this summer to Oculus Rift and Oculus Quest, and we can't wait for you guys to try it. Okay, let's get this straight. Budget cuts, Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets, and Acorn. Is it just me, or are Swedish developers really good at making wholesome VR games? Next couple of VR games, not so wholesome. Rip wholesome. We work closely with AMC to bring you The Walking Dead Onslaught. We're really excited about this title because it allowed us for the first time hey, to bring together game? all the amazing technology that we built up from past uh, shooters like raw data, the melee experiences from pre rise to glory, and our locomotion system from Sprint Vector for the first time bringing them together in an action-packed experience like no one's seen before. Not only did we get to work with AMC and some of their team of writers, we also got to work with some of the amazing talent on the show as well. As you're going through the campaign, you'll be able to level up your characters, unlocking new perks. Not only that, each character will have unique iconic weapons that you've seen in the show and using time and time again. And you'll be able to experience what it's like to play as those characters fighting off the wall. With The Walking Dead, it's not just about the world itself and the walkers, but really how you interact with them. And we wanted to take that to the next level in VR. So building upon our past animated technology with Creed, we wanted to take uh, melee and combat to the next level. So we created what we're calling progressive dismemberment. This new system, players not only can decapitate, uh, scalp, carve, impale, and do all sorts of disgusting, horrible things to the walkers as they try to survive through this horrifying experience. It will be available at local arcades across the globe, but arcades. also at retail for the Oculus Rift and the Vive systems.
Hotel R and R. This is completely against hotel policy. Well done sneaking in, Agent. You've made your way into Dr. Zor's boardroom. Don't get too comfortable. You're only here to gather intel. As long as you don't touch anything, you shouldn't have any trouble. Uh. We expect nothing less than your usual professionalism. Good luck. Uh. Hey, PSVR fans. Enjoying the show? I hope so, because the next couple are for you. Oh my. <laughs> Let's hand it over to one of the coolest dudes in video games. What's up, everybody? It's me, Greg. Oh my god, it's kind of funny. funny. And I'm so happy that Upload VR is doing their own showcase. Of course, we're doing our own showcase too. E3, all indie games. Uh, it's happening tonight. You can check it out later. Enough about that! Instead, let's talk about PlayStation VR. That's right! The only real form of VR there is. I'm just kidding. I love Oculus Quest. I just have this thing where I, you know, joke around about not liking PC games. I digress. Uh, PlayStation VR, I'm here to talk to you about Mini Mac Mayhem. It is a game from Future Lab. You might remember them. Um, how could you forget? from the Velocity games that were awesome on the PlayStation Vita. You remember the PlayStation Vita, right? No, you don't. It was a handheld. It had two sticks. It was great. Nobody supported it enough, except people like Future Lab. That's why we need to support them. Hey, with you remember the PlayStation Vita, right? Right? Mini Mech Mayhem is a tabletop action strategy game for up to four players online. The game is played out in two stages. The, the first stage is planning, where everyone programs their actions for their little mech, and they use the PlayStation Move controllers to pick the moves for them. And then the second phase is where... I mean, it's kind of interesting because, like, play out, those... And, it uh, kind of makes sense, because this and kind of funny are both, During like, During the programming the new, phase, like, you're trying to get your mech onto the so victory square, kind of or to push other. another mech into a, a hazard. You have to try and guess what your opponent is going to do. So if it does go horrible, be wrong it's not the end of the world because you have intercept cards that you can play uh, such as calling in an airstrike or just nudging someone off by one square we've got this thing in the game called an avatar which is what you play as my favorite thing is to go into the shop and then customize my avatar you can also customize your mech as well your little buddy and you can put different parts on them and change the colors one of my unbiased favorite parts of the game is the AI there are about 60 AI characters in-game. Each of the AI characters will have its own difficulty assigned to it, so they fall into four categories, easy, medium, hard, and tutorial. So you might start to recognize some of these AI. If you're playing against hard all the time, you'll come up against Jack the Brave. What am I called in the game? You're Frosty Matt. <laughs> I should have been Lemon Matt, really. <laughs> well, you can swap with a Sour, sour Claire if you want. I'll be Sour Claire. At the heart of Mini Mac Mayhem, there's a real strong funny bone, which is new for us as a studio. We've made fun games before, we've not made funny games. Mini Mac Mayhem is coming out on the 18th of June, and you can pre-order now on the PlayStation Store. Shelter! Is there a brothel in this town? Where the fuck is everybody? By all the...
dead sir. Though. 2019 has been amazing for Perv Games, with much more to come, including the highly anticipated Sorrento, but we're not stopping there. As you saw earlier, the Angry Birds Movie 2 VR Under Pressure is coming exclusively to PlayStation oh, the other VR. Ones making We're so Birds. honored to reveal today that Perp are plucking it out of the digital world and are sending it soaring onto store shelves everywhere. We can't wait for you to try this zany underwater adventure when it launches later this year. Also later this year, Drunken Bar Fight will get a special edition with added DLC, introducing a few new levels and features like character selection, customization, unlockables, and four-player multiplayer. So roll up your sleeves, ready for when Drunken Bar Fight Special Edition More comes to retail in 2019. Perp is always listening to the needs of the VR community, and that's why we are so happy to announce a physical edition of Pixel Ripped 1989, the multi-dimensional homage to retro gaming, is coming exclusively to the Perp store. We'll be opening pre-orders very soon. And later this year, we'll continue to work with Arvor to publish Also, this one looks interesting. Pixel Ripped 1995. Because it's like a classic pixel market game, but in, in 3D territories. VR. Right, that's it! Well, almost. We've got one last thing to share with you Oh my you god, today. it's just like the Wii U demo. Wait. It seems like it might be something big. Like, is it like an existing franchise? Like... Like Angry Birds. Highwire Games' breathtaking PSVR exclusive adventure enables you to achieve the impossible as you gradually explore and unravel the secrets of an ancient city. It's one you've been waiting for, and today we are thrilled to reveal that Golem will get a physical release through Perk oh. Games at launch. Thank you for your continued okay, support. Okay, so it's Enjoy a the game of, the of their own. Hey guys, I'm Arjen, programmer at Further the Games. Just I'm excited that's a physical to program. reveal something we've been working on that has been requested I mean, good for the fans, I guess. Can't wait what you guys think. Well then. Okay. Wasn't really much to go off of for what this you guys think. This will be the think, Arizona but... experience you've come to love with the freedom of the Oculus Quest coming this year. Dance Central is the hottest club oh in the my god. Reality. Where the music never stops and the doors never close. Dance With a 32 song soundtrack ranging from the 70s to today's biggest hits, you can go in, dance with your favorite Dance Central characters to custom choreography all designed for VR. In addition to practice mode, customizing it's your like, avatar, I can't believe this is a VR game cooperative now. Online multiplayer, it's like it was a connect, new features coming connect to Dance game. Central. Playing Dance Central can be a workout. It's definitely a great game for fitness, so we created the fitness app. And the fitness app allows you to track your calories burned in real time, as well as your stats over time. A huge part of the experience in Dance Central is dancing with the characters. Currently, your friends can challenge you to beat their scores, but now the characters are gonna challenge you. Dancing with the characters allows you to earn respect and eventually unlock assets in the wardrobe so you can look fly anywhere in the game. And finally, we're releasing six songs as DLC. So if you've mastered all 32 on the soundtrack, no problem. We have more content coming your way. Dan Central is available now for the Oculus Quest, Rift S, and Rift. So pick it up and meet us in the club. I'm really excited to be here to announce something that we've been waiting to share actually with uh, the rest of the VR community out there. Um, oh, and that, that PSP is that box we're bringing Echo Arena to Quest. And for us, that was actually a huge endeavor that we so started that's a God War PlayStation. internally. So I'm really excited to tell you that soon you'll be able to play Echo Arena in all its glory on the Quest. Hello, Captain Rock. I'm glad to see you're still safe. You too, Echo One. I'm also really excited to, uh, to be here not only to announce uh, Echo Arena for Quest, but I'm here to introduce Lone Echo 2. In Lone Echo 2, actually, we're joining back in the story of Jack and Liv, and you'll be able to kind of reprise your role as Jack in the story that took our characters in the 22nd century from the space station around the rings of Saturn forward 400 years into the future, stranded on, on this uh, spaceship. But then we open the world by introducing more characters uh, that are going to contribute to, to your narrative, to the way you're going to play the game, and find out why not only is is the gameplay mechanic important, but why is the relationship we build with the two characters important? Lone Echo 2 really reinforces this idea that you and Liv 
uh, like family and that you and her basically will go through anything against all odds. They can't know you're online. I promise I'll explain everything when I get back. I'm going to need your help. I can't wait to play more Dance Central on Quest, but uh, Lone Echo 2 looked amazing, didn't it? Let's keep rolling with that PC VR vibe. Battle Lake is our high seas pirate adventure. And the real focus here from Serbios is we're just two huge fans of high action combat and pirate in the high seas, and we just wanted to bring those all together in an action packed experience people haven't been able to do in VR yet. Like all games at Serbios, we really focus first and foremost on how can we innovate, how can we push the medium forward. So previously we had made Sprint Vector, and that product we worked on fluid locomotion. So building upon the fluid locomotion system from the past, the team said, let's take this to vehicles. And the first thing we, the team asked ourselves is, if we're going to put fluid locomotion on a vehicle, what vehicle should we put players in? And everyone said almost simultaneously, pirates, right? Battleships on the high seas. You're constantly surrounded by dozens of pirate ships. We have a variety of weapons from broadsides to gatling guns, machine guns. Um, axe throwers, ballistas, all sorts of things. And when you're playing the experience, not only does each pirate lord have a series of weapons and different levels they can progress through the system, they also have their unique powers and abilities. In addition to our campaign mode, we also have warfare mode. Where you can have up to four players co-op on the same team going from one scenario to another in a series of missions that give players random objectives and dynamic enemy types that progressively get harder and harder and harder for the players get. So one of the really exciting things we're doing about Battle Lake is we're actually going to have a closed beta. So please go to BattleLake.com where you can sign up to participate in that and players will be able to play this new and exciting warfare mode before this gets released to the public. In my life thus far, I have lost my unborn child, my wife. My fortune. I've been betrayed and dishonored. All for the sake of evil men and their ambitions. <laughs> Serve only to collect. God, that animation looked bad. What more do I have to lose?
we're working on Space Team Virtuality, which is a cooperative shouting Speaking game. Speaking of bad where animations, you have to this stop looks your even worse. From reaching its impending doom, the only way you can do that is by yelling at your friends. We've licensed the original Space Team iOS and Android game with over 8 million users. Uh, we've brought that great couch co op play, brought it into VR. It's for between two and six players. You can play locally or you can play online. Just like the original game, each sector gets harder and harder and crazier as you're shouting things to each other, different challenges in each like, sector. Seriously, what in the hell is that hand animation? Your panel. Uh, ray guns to shoot, you can shoot all the aliens that are throwing goop at your panels with. Like, I get it's a work in progress, but so it just looks so bad. Breaks, you can then fix it. Uh, we've got fire extinguishers to put all the fires out, which will inevitably happen. Definitely. You'll have asteroid fields that you need to defend against. And of course we've got terrifyingly difficult to understand instructions and a high level of techno babble. And lots of over the top facial expressions from uh. the various avatars, which will also be personalisable as well. Ultimately the important thing to remember for this game is you have to work together as a space team! We're going to be opening the game up for alpha testing soon. We're really excited to be bringing Space Team to VR fans at home, but also VR arcades, so people who might not have access to headsets can go off and play. And watch this space. Attica is a VR rhythm shooter available now mm. in early access. Now this, I'm Armed with Google it. Blasters, players shoot and smash to the beat of a killer soundtrack with 22 songs and counting. We've already released 10 updates in early access, and later this month we'll have our biggest update yet. It will include more new songs, a new environment, a new weapon set, and new leaderboard features that make it easier to challenge and compete with your friends, even cross-platform. We recently updated the game to allow for custom blasters and avatars, and we also shared tools to allow you to create alternate target maps for any of the songs in our game soundtrack. Today, we're releasing an in-game editor that allows you to shoot along to any song on the soundtrack any way you like, which is immediately a playable map which can be shared or exported to Reaper for tweaking. We are extremely grateful to our Attica creators and wanted to find a special way to showcase and reward Okay, yeah, that's a bit of a doubter. They so basically just said, to invite all of you yeah, to there's a level editor, but you can only use our existing Submit them songs. through our Discord channel by July 10th for a chance to win prizes. Oh, it's by Harmonix? We look forward to okay. playing what you make. That's at least you can pick up Attica now on Steam, Oculus Store, or Vive Port, and we'll see you on the leaderboards. But yeah, it's like, what is the point of a level editor if you can only edit, like, existing songs? Like, because they already exist. Like, the whole point of a level editor is to make new levels that don't exist yet. Asgard's Wrath is an action-adventure uh, RPG game set in a Norse mythology uh, backdrop. You're going to be exploring a number of realms throughout the entire game. You're going to meet some of the famous Asgardians from across the world of Wrath. Loki's going to be sending you off to different realms to meet mortal heroes that you're going to aid and help to complete their saga. Away so Gameplay is very action oriented. As a god, you're going to be converting animals to assist the human characters. The shark's pretty hungry, so you could tell him to eat corpses. As he's eating the corpses, he'll, sometimes he'll be pulling a lever that's lifting up a platform, or he could be opening a door. I think people have never seen combat like what they're going to see in Asgard's Wrath. It's so visceral to have the sword and the shield in your hand and feel the impact and really feel like you're there competing with somebody. But probably one of my favorite elements is when you, when you first as a god convert an animal and you put it down, to actually initiate and make that animal be your follower and do your bidding, you've got to walk over and give him a high five or a fist bump to get him to follow you. My blades are at your command. Asgard's Wrath will be out fall 2019 and it'll be out on the Oculus Rift. And make sure to play it on the Oculus Rift S because it looks absolutely fantastic on that. My name is Victoria. In the fourth year of the reign of King James, I was knighted for fending off a raid by orcs from the Black Fist. Shortly after, I joined the Volpine Order to help maintain peace in the city. In the sixth year of King James, I saved a group of noble women from an unruly mob at Rose Square. And in the following year, I defeated a company of bandits gathering near our border. I accompanied my lord as his steadfast guard through the Shadow Hills, the Azure Marshlands, and the Ashen Plains. 
No one dared doubt my loyalty. Until, that is, Lord Conrad was injured in battle during the Cobalt Rebellion. Baroness Eva was behind everything. Shh. Someone's coming. Be quiet. We don't have much time. Where were we? Oh, right. The injury. While the Lord was recovering, Baroness Eva took control of the military. Baroness Eva began installing her close allies in positions of power. I couldn't stand it any longer. So we planned to retake the castle. But then, she uncovered our plot. Last night, just as I was supposed to meet Lord Conrad, I sneaked into his room. A familiar smell hit me as soon as I opened the door. The wretched smell of blood. Just like being back on the battlefield. I checked on Lord Conrad immediately, but he was already lying there dead, drenched in blood. It was obvious that his last breaths were spent in agony. I couldn't find any wounds, and the color of his blood was strange. As if he were... poisoned. Suddenly, I realized I had stumbled into a trap. Baroness Eva had been... Oh hey, apparently Baloo is gonna be on Twitch's E3 coverage. But, but there were too many of them. That's interesting. I somehow managed to escape. But I must go on. This is treason, plain and simple. And I'm out to expose the traitor's plot. <sighs> Let's make a deal, Dave. If you help me clear my name, I will bring no charges against you. I give you my word. Rogan. Huh? Rogan. That's my name. Garden of the Sea is a VR game about oh, hey, truly belonging games. somewhere, about creating a like, home I with never your own hands, like and about Xbox exploring and now connecting this. with the world around you. That's you start out on a small island, and you have a little cottage, and your objective is to uh, grow your own garden and explore the nearby islands and befriend some interesting creatures, and basically just make this uh, world your home. We had this internal pitch day right after we released Budget Cuts and Christopher, the art director on this game, and I both came into the pitch day and basically pitched the exact same game. So we looked at each other and we're like, we kind of have to build this now, don't we? We've got a plant growing system and a crafting system. We want to do some crossbreeding in the future, both for the animals and for the plants, so that you know what you're feeding them affects how they behave or what they look like in the future. We have some quests, we have a boat, uh, we want to put in fishing soon. Another thing that I really like is uh, the creatures, because they are really fun to interact with. Yeah, they're so cute, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I hope we're gonna add more of them uh, for the full game. I have to say I have like a soft spot for the crafting system. Uh, that one I think has a lot of potential to become really cool. So we figured like why not release it now, today, in way too early access. We have so many ideas about what we want to build, but we want to know what you want the game to have. And we need your input on that to figure out how to make this game the best it possibly can be. We are releasing Garden of the Sea on Steam and we will support all the major VR headsets via Steam VR. Back high five. Well stuck. I don't know. That's these, how that works. This cool. Backwards we're not high good at fives. high fives. We're gonna work on our high fives. Mm. Hi, I'm Paul Vandermeer, lead designer at Vertigo Games, and today we're proud to reveal the first gameplay footage of the Dam DLC, the largest Arizona Sunshine mission yet. It's coming your way August 27th. Please enjoy. You knew what you were getting into. Get inside the dam, reset the control systems, and prove yourself useful.
sounds like so they literally just announced this game earlier, and then now they already announced something you'll okay. see later in the same stream. Okay. Let us begin. Hi, I'm Erin, head of content at Hammerhead, an immersive entertainment studio based in the UK. We're excited to announce that we're working on the continuation of Abe, the award-winning 2013 cult film by Rob McClellan. Abe is a tense psychological horror about a robot who's looking for love in all the wrong places. We are creating a multi-format story world, leading with a pioneering location-based VR experience that will be brought to life through state-of-the-art volumetric capture. We're also bringing you a short film and a game release that can be played with or without VR. We're proud to present the first teaser. Take a look. This time, I will fix you. It looks amazing, but what are you going to do to that pig? Anyway, thanks Hammerhead for that one. In fact, we're nearing the home stretch now, so it's time to start throwing some more megatons your way. Here's a latest look at Aspire 1. Okay, I'll also then. Aspire One is a made-for-VR stealth action first-person shooter that targets every VR platform. The original inspiration for Aspire actually came from Upload VR's uh, presence podcast that they ran in 2016. One of their listener questions was, why aren't there any realistic stealth games in VR? Games like Metal Gear Solid and Splinter Cell. And for two years, we've been trying to reimagine these classic stealth mechanics in VR. Yeah, Spire's been built for uh, VR PC headsets, including the Oculus Rift S, Valve Index, the HTC Vive, and Windows Mixed Reality. It's also coming to PSVR and the Oculus Quest, where gameplay will remain one-to-one. -one. A huge problem with VR is simulator sickness, or VR sickness. And right from day one, we've always wanted all players to play Aspire with the full freedom of movement and the precise control that they expect from console shooters. So early in development, we invented the Aspire Control Theater. It is our locomotion system with its comfort features, and the Aspire Control Theater allows for full freedom of movement, maintains immersion in the game world, and minimizes VR sickness. We've also got electromagnets in the Aspire robot's hands, so you can climb metal surfaces throughout the game um, and distance grip uh, certain objects, which gives you a variety of stealth options when you're playing the game. You can actually sneak up behind guards if you're undetected freeze. and physically say freeze, and they'll be held up. Players experience long-form story-driven campaign missions, so they take 30 to 80 minutes to complete. Progress can be saved mid-mission, which is perfect for playing on the go. There are also a number of virtual challenges that test your skills on global leaderboards. Tripwire have just been fantastic over the, the journey. They've been so much more than just a publisher. They've provided us dev support and a variety of other resources throughout the journey. The Aspire team is extremely excited to get the game into your virtual hands. You'll be able to play Aspire this coming August, where it will be available on all platforms. To find out more about the game and to stay up to date on the latest developments, be sure to visit us on our social media platforms. Holy f that looked amazing! If you like that, check out this cool Hey everybody, Shabs, game director here at First Contact Entertainment. I'm Love excited to be here on behalf of our team to give you guys a world exclusive to the new title we're working on. It's a fast-paced multiplayer shooter in VR. Like seriously though, like, I get it, shooters are popular games, but like, 
does every single game need to be a fast place multiplayer shooter? Like, seriously. I swear, like, 50%, like, actually, probably more like 75% of all the damn games at every single conference here is always a shooter that's multiplayer. Also, yeah, holy fuck, this is a shit. So this is a way louder conference. Yeah, hopefully it wraps up pretty quickly here, because the PC gaming show should start like less than 10 minutes. Big stream elements for the self promotion. Yeah, they're already doing the pre-show. So we knew early on that we wanted to make Project Cats 2 a game of larger scope and variety. Uh, so that's when we asked Fast Travel Games to collaborate with us. Yeah, I mean we used to share an office uh, back then, so we played each other's games uh, before they were finished. There was lots of discussions and great ideas being thrown around. So when Neat approached us to co-develop this game, uh, my thoughts went back to those discussions and uh, I'm really, really happy we will really work together to make them come alive. In Budget Cuts 2. You're on a mission. Uh, it used to be about uh, saving your job, but now you have to save the world. So your mission is to take down Transcorp, a mega powerful corporation that kills humans and replaces them with workaholic robots, all in the name of efficiency. And to accomplish this, uh, you have to leave your office cubicle and travel across several new types of environments. So these uh, new environments, they enable us to make um new gameplay both in terms of enemy encounters and uh, puzzle solving and uh, combining that with uh, um, our improved AI system and new types of enemies, uh, new types of gadgets uh, lets us make um, a whole new range of challenges. So it's not just like choosing between uh, stealth or action, it's more fine grained like um, how you choose to approach a stealth scenario or um, or action, it's more fine-grained, like um, how you choose to approach a stealth scenario or um, what tools you use to accomplish your goals. The original Body Cuts was uh, about escaping uh, the Transcorp offices, so we found that players were taking uh, a very cautious uh, approach to enemies. In, in Budget Cuts 2, it's much more about infiltration, about getting closer to the Transcorp uh, headquarters to finally be able to take them down. Budget Cuts 2 is a self-contained title, so uh, you, you don't have to have enjoyed Budget Cuts 1 uh, to play this, but I think you really should because it's an awesome game. Stay tuned because Budget Cuts 2 Mission Insolvency will be released on all high-end VR headsets this year. What? Well, that dun dun dun. Okay, okay, hold on to your butts. It's the big finale. Let's hand it over to Cloudhead Games. Okay, what is this finale gonna be? Like, is it gonna be anything that anybody actually knows? I mean, the visual style looks pretty damn awesome already. Uh, just some so Pistol Whip is this kind of glorious hodgepodge of genres. Uh, we've been describing it as well, like this a guy's really quiet. FPS game, but it also has the inklings of like a runner game and uh, a bullet hell game. It's a shooter that you don't necessarily. Have Everything to else was so damn loud. Now this is barely hit. audible. It's, it's a rhythm game that doesn't require you to take out enemies in a specific order. To Wait, me, the, the it's a rhythm shooter. Is is all about That's speed. interesting. You're not taking your time and aiming down the sights to, to make sure you get a headshot on the dude. You don't have time for that. You gotta move quickly through the scene. 
taking out as many guys as you can, dodging bullets all at the same time. I love this idea that you are kind of just focused on the thing that you're good at. And in this case, it's either being reactive and accurate to hitting enemies or you're thinking about the beat and the musicality of it. It's like taking chocolate and peanut butter in VR with your kind of flow state rhythm of Beat Saber and you've got your frenetic action of Super Hot and you put them together and you end up feeling like John Wick in a movie trailer. Taking out targets and ultimately being this action That's a lot of ass. comparisons. We ended up listening to a whole bunch of different tracks obviously and as the team kind of focused in on what we really wanted the heart of the game to be. Uh, we got this audio is terrible. Clear that one label in Montreal really stood out. Uh, Cannibal and Records is, is who we ended up partnering with. Straight from the grave. They just seem to have this library of really dramatic and kick-ass epic action songs, but they're also just super fun. So it really kind of hit the sweet spot for us and what we were looking for. A round of Pistol Whip feels kind of like watching a high-octane action movie trailer. You know, if you liked John Wick, Hardcore Henry, Equilibrium, you're probably gonna love this. So for me, part of the inspiration for Pistol Whip was figuring out a way to kind of plant the user in the center of an action scene. A lot of rhythm games do deal with just your, your static and you're in a void and things sort of fly past you. We wanted to go a different direction and move the player actually through a space so that we could tap into action movie tropes. This is not exactly the club from John Wick, but it's tapping into that same vibe. Even by happenstance, without even trying, the player's gonna be kind of musically flowing through the game uh, just based on where the enemies in, are popping up. The stuff that you see in your typical rhythm game where you have a specific set of targets to hit at a specific timing, uh, that doesn't exist here. You're presented opportunities in, in, in a rhythmic matter that's driven by the music uh, that's at the heart of everything, and you choose how to capitalize on those. At the start, you're trying to compete against yourself. You're, you're trying to best your last score, you're trying to be more tactical and more surgical with how you're taking out enemies. You start in a panic state. I like the kind of steps and stages you, you experience as you kind of go through different songs and you learn how, how to be a great pistol whip player. Yeah, they're really and cutting this to the wire and like... Shines in terms of game there's game only game. like four minutes um, whether it's left until the freaking PC game show. Or something like we did for Valve with the Hand Labs experience or Pistol Whip, we pride ourselves on knowing what feels good, and I think Pistol Whip feels amazing, and people will get it when they play it. Okay, that's a wrap. We are done, finished, finito, and loud again. Here. Thank you so much for watching the first ever Upload E3 VR Showcase. Thank you to every developer that took part today. You guys make the VR industry what it Honestly, is. Honestly, yeah, that was Let's pretty close good. out with another look at some of the games we covered today. Okay, yeah, they're really cutting into the wire. There's only, like, two minutes left. Well, three, because 240. I mean, I could probably technically switch over here, but I mean... It's a montage. This is not going to take long at all. And they're just doing a countdown right now, so... Yeah, they're really freaking cut into the wild. This montage is, there's only like a minute left on their countdown. And this montage is still going.
that's probably not good. My entire screen just went black for a moment. Um, okay. Well, it looks like stream's still technically alive, so I guess it's fine. And yeah, they really cut this down to the very, very, very wire. Okay. So that's gonna end it for this one. Time to go on to the next.